Hey there, we're going to be working on some value with this next demo, actually series of demos. We're going to start on what I call a progressive values drawing, where we're going to be taking different media and comparing kind of their effects and what we can do with value with each one of them. Starting with charcoal, moving on to ink wash, and then into um, cross contour, cross hatching line work. So with this demo, we're going to start with charcoal. We're going to focus on gray, white, black objects. So see what you can find around the house, but I'm also going to show you how you can make your own if you don't have anything very good at hand to work with. So let's get started. <laughs> so here's the batch of stuff that I have gathered. I'm going to be working with charcoal, maybe a bit of white, blending stumps, exacto knife, or maybe scissors if you have those. Um, some tape, and I've got two sheets of my 12 by 18 drawing paper. And then I have these shapes I'm going to build so that I can maybe add them to my still life, which might help you if you're working from home and don't have much to work with. So I will put these templates here for you to download if you wanna um, print them out and work with them yourself. This also shows you kind of what their forms look like. And um, I'll just start by cutting them out. Exacto knife or scissors. Exacto knife might be faster, easier. So I have a ruler, piece of cardboard, and then I will cut these out. So now that I've made some objects, I'm going to prepare my paper. So this is gonna be basically three drawings in one. So I'm gonna take two sheets and I'm gonna be going to tape them together the long way. So it's a really long drawing. So I'll take my masking tape and tape on the back side, not the front, one length of tape across that seam so I don't have a bunch of bumps on my drawing. Press that down and then just trim the edges. Basically the length of the drawing is now 36 inches and I want to divide this into three equal parts. So 12 inches. So you're going to have, you know, three square drawings, 12 by 12. So I'm gonna use my ruler to help me figure out where the fold should be exactly. And it's gonna be pretty cool because as we build this, we'll unfold it and we'll see it transform into this nice long line of really interesting objects that have beautiful value that we've developed. And then I'll fold in the other section here to this fold. And then I've got my three areas mapped out and we're going to work on only one section at a time so i'm starting with this first section i got a sheet of newsprint and some masking tape because what i want to do is isolate and just draw on one section at a time and not get a mess on the other sections that i haven't drawn on yet so i'm putting this newsprint right up to that crease of that fold that I created and taping it down. And since I'm going to be using a little bit of wet media here and there on these drawings, I'm also going to tape down <coughs> the other three edges. I can't tape down the one because that's the continuation of my drawing, but I'm going to create a thin edge there. 
so that as I draw it, it'll create a little bit of a nice clean frame for the drawing, but also allow me to do some wet media so that it dries flat and doesn't get all bumpy on me. I do this a lot with drawings, you may have noticed. It just helps it to stay clean and have a nice finished look to it when you aren't done with the drawing in the end. And there you have it. And my newsprint there, and I'm almost ready to go. Um, I've got my materials gathered, my charcoal, eraser, blending stumps. Um, but the other thing I want to do is to just take a look at my still life and decide what I want to draw. So remember the viewfinders that we've been using for other drawings? I just took that rectangular viewfinder and taped it off so that would be a square composition so it matches my paper. And then I'm going to take a look at my still life and decide what I want to draw. So this is my still life that I have set up. I have a number of objects. Um, but the important thing is that we're going to make sure that this is like an active composition. So an active composition is when things kind of break off the edges. Um, so I'm going to use my viewfinder to be able to find that. So hold this up and look through at my still life. I don't know if it'll focus for you, but um, how it will work is that I can look through there and decide on what things are gonna be cut off on which side. Um, so you get the idea of what I'm looking for. And basically, you know, when I do this, I'll have objects that come off of this end and other objects that come off of this end. So that when I open up the drawing in the end, it's just gonna be a continuous row of objects. So that's the goal, okay? Okay, so with my charcoal and everything, I also grabbed a 6H pencil to help me just rough in a quick gesture drawing. So we're going to do the start of every drawing <clears throat> the same as we've done um, in previous drawings that we've started to learn. Gesture, sight proportion and scale, and then we'll start to fill out some sense of volume. So gesture, you remember, you just kind of draw through the forms, get things down as quickly as possible across the page. With a really light pencil like this, it's not going to be entirely easy to see the lines that I'm drawing, but it helps keep it light so that the focus is only on the value of the charcoal that we're going to develop. So you can also remember to hold up your viewfinder just to make sure you remind yourself exactly what all is included on that page. Yeah, 6H is a pretty hard pencil. So I think I might move to a little bit darker one just so I can see better what's going on. So this one is a 2H. That's gonna give me a little bit better understanding of what I've got in there. So I'm just using this to make sure I've got all the elements in there that I intended to include in the drawing. And remember, you're holding up your pencil and, um, you know, since I finished that really quick gesture, I'm just kind of getting a loose sense of proportion and scale. You know, spend um, maybe like five minutes on this penciled in portion of it and then you can move into charcoal maybe 10 minutes depends on how comfortable you feel if you're new to drawing i can understand it might take a little bit more time just to make sure you got your proportions down so my gesture drawings are always you know a bit of a mess it's totally okay with me um, you have a kneaded eraser that you can use if you like. I also like these sort of harder erasers, depends on what you have on hand. Those are my objects. So I have things breaking the edge on each side. And then I can start to rough things in with charcoal. So with charcoal, it's nice that I can 
um, kind of push things around with my fingers with blending stumps and whatnot. So I don't have to be super perfect to start and I can refine it as I go. So try to keep it so that it's not too linear too quickly. Um, you know, these blending stumps can really help you smooth things out and get things roughed in pretty quickly without getting, you know, too dark with the charcoal too fast, just so that you can see where everything is going to be sitting. And you can still make changes without feeling like you're stuck or have it too much defined yet. Remember, blending stump, eraser is a great drawing tool just as much as anything else. And, you know, start by getting a general sense of all those elements in the page. And then we'll work on refining some of those values. So try to look at those distinct shapes of light and dark. So what's defining a, an object or a form is not an outline, but a difference in value. Super important. So you don't, you're not going to be seeing me drawing outlines of objects. You're going to be seeing me maybe carve out a value of one form or another using the blending stump, the eraser, the side of the charcoal. I mean, charcoal is a bit dry, but it's actually kind of a nice medium to use because you can push things around quite quickly and easily. It's not like, you know, graphite where it's just this tiny, tiny point that you have to deal with the whole time. And this is why also not using charcoal pencils, not really a big fan of them. Um, you know, charcoal is a more blunt tool and it's meant to be pushed around and not used necessarily in such a linear manner except for you know those details so it's best to really start out this way and <clears throat> using the blending stumps works just as well to get those sort of refined portions of an object so i'm starting out you know pretty rough with this. It's totally okay. The drawing should always build like, you know, as a whole together. All of these objects, none of them should be more developed or detailed than another. Until you get them all mapped in there first. Remember to continue siding and mapping proportion and scale, holding your drawing tool up to those objects and making comparisons. As I'm doing this, I'm also going to bring in a little bit of white Conte to just help me get the effect on those some of those white objects that I have in there. Because you can lay over the white Conte on top, which is nice <clears throat> to get a little bit more of those subtler values. There are various types and uses of charcoal as an art medium, but the commonly used types are compressed, vine, and pencil. So vine charcoal is a long and thin charcoal stick that is the result of burning grape vines in a kiln without air. The removable properties of willow and vine charcoal through dusting and erasing are favored by artists for making kind of preliminary sketches or basic compositions. Uh, this also, you know, makes charcoal much less suitable for creating detailed images. 
uh, compressed charcoal is uh, shaped into a block or a stick. The intensity of the shade is determined by hardness. The amount of gum or wax binders used during the production process affects the hardness. Um, softer producing intensely black markings while firmer leaves light marker markings. Charcoal pencils consist of you know, compressed charcoal enclosed in a jacket of wood. So these are designed to be similar to graphite pencils while making most of the properties of charcoal. You know, they're often used to you uh, for kind of like fine line or crisp little tiny details. So I know that charcoal can be a bit messy, so you might decide you want to put like a piece of um, I don't know, paper towel or other another sheet of paper down to help you kind of be able to manipulate things further. Takes a bit of patience to work with the charcoal. Normally I work on a larger sheet of paper um, so that I can work with a broader tool more easily. So, you know, it might be that you like maybe put your charcoal into like smaller chunks so that you can push it around the paper a little bit more easily. So as you go, you know, you'll start with those sort of larger forms and then little by little develop further detail so that every object is coming up together as a whole. So don't finish off one object at a time. That should never be how your work proceeds. Like in any kind of art that I make, I'm always considering the entire space of the drawing or the painting or whatever I'm making at once and pulling it up as a whole. Each object develops a little bit further each time I come across it with a kind of another layer of value or detail or color or whatever else I'm adding to it. <clears throat> so try to think about it in that way as you continue making your work. I mean, like if you're doing animation, for instance, I know a lot of my students um, are working in that area. You always have a storyboard that you plan out first, right? So when you're doing a drawing, your gesture is kind of your storyboard and mapping out proportion and scale. And then as you develop it, you know, you start you deciding, you know, what are your characters that are going to be in your story? And what do they look like? And then all of a sudden you have greater and greater detail as you go from like that armature of the animation into kind of a full narrative and fully texturized three-dimensional being that you might be creating. It's the same thing with drawing. Just a little bit kind of different way of thinking, that's all. Because it's, it's not like a moving image, it's something that's flat. And still, maybe it's e it should be easier that way, right? So I have a general value across everything and then as I proceed, I'm gonna start to add in some details on these individual objects that I'm drawing. So remember that, you know, your eraser is a pretty indispensable drawing tool just as much as anything else. And you can use it to carve out areas of light, particularly in a drawing like this. You can also try perhaps that black Conte along with your charcoal, if that gives you a little bit more control or not. See how it goes. Try a combination of, you know, different materials. The Conte is a little bit harder than the charcoal, which is softer and blacker. 
so it might be good in some areas. So as we proceed through this series of progressive value drawings, you're going to have a much better understanding of, you know, what type of materials work well for you and which ones, you know, create the type of effect that you want for a particular piece of work. Charcoal is often, you know, best for something that's very expressive and moody. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've shown you maybe a couple pieces by an artist called Kate Hallwitz, who really used the emotional, expressive nature of something like charcoal in her work. There's also William Kentridge, who actually created full-on animations based off of his charcoal drawings and used you know, the eraser quite a lot in these animations that he created. So some of you might be interested in, in the kind of work that he creates as well. So look him up. Um, so I'm developing these little by little. You can see some details starting to come out. Okay, so I've, I've grabbed a cup of water and my paintbrush, a little bit of gesso, or if you can also use like acrylic white paint or even gouache. Um, I'd suggest more of a, an acrylic like gesso or an acrylic white paint. And so I take a brush and then that helps me to refine some of the edges because, you know, the charcoal can be a little frustrating sometimes if you really want a refined edge but also for some people it's like really kind of nice to have something look expressive in that way so you know each one of these drawings that we create you might not love every single material that we use but it's good to try each one of them out and see how they can work for you um, in different ways in your work. Um, so I just use the gesso to crispen some things up, clarify some edges, and also sometimes I use it to, um, you know, blend a little bit of gray here and there. I think it's fun to work with. It lets you kind of smooth things around in a different way. You can use multiple brushes. You know, I was starting with a smaller one, <clears throat> but I'll probably switch also to a larger one just to help me push things around a bit more. And it can, you know, make those objects really pop. So this is what I have fun doing after I've established the majority of the piece. So you'll find that I often like to work, you know, mixed media, particularly in my drawings because it creates a different kind of unique look to a work that you can't get in other ways. Helps you to push the medium in a direction that might be surprising or unique or, you know, individual to you as an artist. So make sure that you've got, you know, that paper taped down because this is where it's gonna be important when you're adding something that's more of a wet medium.
So I'm going to go through this piece and, you know, add some bits of white here and there to smooth some of the objects out, draw out some of the like little or highlights. But I'm not going to be like too excessive with it. I still like that look of that charcoal in combination. But I can use that gesso to really like draw out a glimmer of a shine of a highlight here and there to really make those objects pop in a way that I like. So I think that like, you know, just adding these bits of white, like little tricks like this just really help bring your drawings to life. And so it's good to know, you know, some of these things, these little moments that you can really make that drawing pop and make it really look exciting and interesting. So you can see I've developed all of this with, you know, just these blending stumps, my little bit of charcoal, nothing like super sharp or detailed, but I'm able to like really make it come to life in a different way. And I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. I wasn't sure at first, you know, but the more you work with it, you can make it happen. So now that I'm done with this, I can pull the tape off and kind of see how it looks. So like when you have something super messy like charcoal, it's so like satisfying, I don't know, to pull the tape off and get like that super clean, crisp edge. And then it makes the drawing all of a sudden look really nice when before it was just like a big mess of like smears and fingerprints. <laughs> So I kind of like that. See that? And I pulled the boost print off as well. And it looks like totally beautiful finished drawing. Very cool. Hey, so thanks for joining me on this nice charcoal progressive portion of this drawing. Um, I hope you enjoyed working with me. Um, bit of a messy hands, but that's okay. Um, and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.